subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update. Welcome to Health Live at Senior Day. We are delighted to have here with us Dr. Tanay Bose. Dr. Bose is a senior consultant, rheumatologist, and internal medicine specialist at the Medica Super Specialty Hospital in Kolkata. He has been the head of the rheumatology department at Medica for the past four years. Besides rheumatology, Dr. Bose is a prominent practitioner of internal medicine, diabetes, and interventional musculoskeletal ultrasonography in Calcutta. He received his MBBS and MD in general medicine from uh, the Calcutta Medical College, that is the Neil Ratan Sarkar Medical College, and the Assam Medical College in Dibrugarh, respectively. Uh, besides, he also completed his MRCP UK Diploma Part 2 program, and he has also done the EULAR, that is the European League Against Rheumatic Disease Certificate in Rheumatic Disease from Amsterdam. He also serves on the editorial board of the Indian Journal of Rheumatology, which is uh, an indexed journal. While he is uh, not an avid researcher, he keeps up, with the, keeps up with the newest studies, trials, and recommendations in the treatment of medical and rheumatological disorders. He spends most of his time researching the pain mechanism, pain neuraxis, and pharmacological and uh, uh, percutaneous intervention and pain management. For patients experiencing rheumatological disorders, he can use a high resolution USG machine as a setup. Diabetes, rheumatology, critical care, and chronic diseases are some of his specializations. Welcome to Health Live at Senior Today, Dr. Bose. Thank you very much for inviting me over here. Uh, how have you been, Dr. Bose? And how's the, what's the weather like in Calcutta in terms of uh, the health scene? Uh, uh, we are just in the uh, lower part of dengue epidemic, which was happening in Kolkata. After the temperature has fallen down, we are getting lesser number of cases. Otherwise, everything is fine over here. The temperature is pleasant right now. People are moving around here and there. Right. So at, at your hospital, because Medica is one of the leading hospitals of, uh, of Calcutta, do you have a lot of patients coming for dengue and and uh, uh, and, and the like? Yeah, actually, last few weeks, uh, it was pretty crowded. Uh, almost every patient that was getting admitted under uh, any consultant, including myself, uh, they were a dengue unless proven otherwise. And there was, you know, the dengue comes with lots of eggs and pains and fever and arthritis. So it was basically a busy schedule last couple of weeks. Uh, however, somehow it has come down over uh, this week, I presume, due to drop in temperature. Maybe. All right, doctor. So over to you, doctor, to, to speak about uh, the topic that is there for today, which is, um, which is rheumatic disease and care for seniors. If you could make a few opening remarks and then we will invite uh, questions from the audience. If uh, those of you who have questions, please, Please put down your age and gender so that Dr. Bose can give a considered reply. Over to you, Dr. Bose. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Let me be very precise. So rheumatological diseases in elderly, uh, let's try to understand what is rheumatology. It is basically uh, aches and pains of joints, muscles, and at the same time, it, is, uh, it deals with uh, autoimmune disorders that also affects the different parts of the body and doesn't spare anything. It can start from eyes and skin and joints and internal organs like kidney, lung, everything. So um, that's the problem with the rheumatological diseases because if you don't know, if you don't have an, uh, you, if your mind doesn't know, your eyes can't see. So what is happening nowadays, since people are not very oriented with the term rheumatology, they bank on different doctors. And most of the cases, unfortunately, the diagnosis remains uncertain. And they are being treated with calcium and vitamin D and some non-specific painkillers without reaching a definitive diagnosis. So let me summarize what are the diseases which are pretty common in elderly. 
we all of us know that the commonest uh, joint disease in elderly is uh, knee pain, which we call osteoarthritis. Frankly speaking, it is not a disease. It's the damage of the knees because our knees are made to carry a particular amount of load and particular type of work over the entire lifespan of a person. So if there is a disbalance in this uh, type of load and the amount of work, so naturally the knee, there's a wear and tear of the knee, the cartilage, first the cartilage goes off, then the ligaments and ultimately the bone, which is ultimately the dead end situation. Apart from this, there are back pains. There are mostly mechanical back pains. So these are very common. Uh, the other ones which are often missed, I will let you know that there are certain diseases which affect uh, different, they have got for certain joints. We, we missed what you said, Dr. Doctor. Yeah, doctor, we it's missed about what you said just the now. Joint. Yeah, different joints, different diseases has got predilection towards different types of joints and by which we can diagnose, such as if you have a pain and swelling in the great toe, the base of the great toe of your feet. It is likely to be gout. Interestingly, it is quite common in males, but very rare in females, especially in, uh, before they, they are 45. So any female uh, aged less than 45, very rarely they present with gouty arthritis. So it is often overdiagnosed. This is one goal I want to share with you. Number two is that there are different arthritis that affect the small joints of the hands, the fingers, the wrist, the elbows, the shoulders, and the feet. And this causes stiffness early morning. If not treated properly, there may be deformities. You might have seen people with deformed hands. So this is called rheumatoid arthritis. This needs to be identified very early and treated very aggressively. And it is not always treated with painkiller or steroids. There are other drugs that can keep it in, at bay. So there are joint pains that affect the shoulders and the head, which is called uh, temporal arthritis or polymyalgia rheumatica. That is also uh, one important thing to be care taken care of. Similarly, uh, there are other diseases which are called ankylosing spondylitis, which occurs in young age and manifest in elderly, where the patient has got a back pain and the patient is not able to move when the patient uh, wakes up early in the morning and there is extreme stiffness. The stiffness lasts for hours and gradually they recover. Another important part I want to highlight is that after this, this particular year, after the COVID and the dengue and all the viral infections, there are many patients who are presenting with uh, scattered joint pains, maybe in the hands or the feet and the knee and the ankles, elbows, shoulders. So these type of joint pains we call post-viral arthritis. So in this person of these patients, it recovers automatically even if it is without any treatment. But another 40% tend to continue this disease for the rest of their life and they need to be managed with a definitive treatment, the drugs. So this is a more or less an idea of arthritis happening in elderly. There is another one which is which we all know is called osteoporosis, which is fragility of the bones and which is age related, often familial, and also may exacerbate if drugs are used. So this is an idea of the arthritis. So if uh, we can go ahead with the discussion of each and individual arthritis. It's very difficult for individuals to identify their problem, but I will definitely love to accept questions about what problem they're suffering from, and I can give an idea about what to do next. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, so we have a few questions that have come in. Um, the first question is, uh, Doctor, is arthritis a hereditary condition? And if both parents have got arthritis. Um, is it a certainty that the child also will get arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis? Did, did it, is it mentioned it is rheumatoid arthritis? Um, yeah, it mentioned rheumatoid arthritis, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry to say whoever has asked the question that most of the autoimmune arthritis are hereditary. They are, they are transmitted by the family. 
but uh, one good thing is that it is not 100% transmitted. That means if a uh, father is suffering from any kind of arthritis, it is not mandatory that the daughter or son is going to suffer from the arthritis, same arthritis. However, suppose there are two, two uh, families, one family has got arthritis in family history, another one doesn't have. The chances of transmitting the disease in the next generation is definitely much higher in the family which have arthritis among their parents. So if both father and mother both are suffering from arthritis, there are significant chances uh, to be for the disease to be transmitted to the offspring. Oh, this is a very common question. If it is specifically mentioned rheumatoid arthritis, also I will give some ideas such as other arthritis such as ankylosing spondylitis that is also transmitted through genes that is very strongly transmitted. Psoriatic arthritis is strongly transmitted. Sometimes there is arthritis with bowel disease very strongly transmitted. Some osteoarthritis, especially osteoarthritis of the base of the thumb, the hand, and the last part of the finger joints. You will see many people has got knobby uh, structures and the last part of the joint. That is called hand osteoarthritis. It has got a strong family predilection. So there are different arthritis which are uh, transmitted uh, through genes to the offspring. Right. Uh, doctor, the same person has asked this question again and asking me, is there a specific age when, uh, uh, when arthritis that has come in by hereditary uh, shows up? Yeah, different arthritis uh, show up at different ages. So, so I will give you a classical example of uh, low back pain, ankylosing spondylitis, which I have discussed. It happens in males, usually young males. And the ideal age they start showing up is around 15 to 16 years. And it can come at any age beyond that. But we get kids or patients who are as young as 15 to 16 years. Similarly, rheumatoid arthritis, it doesn't happen so early. It, it occurs later, maybe 30s and 40s or something like that. Hand osteoarthritis, that is the last part of the joint which I was discussing. Once again, it comes in 40s and 50s, and they often have a family history. So different diseases has a different age of manifestation, but it cannot be predicted 100% because it uh, matters or it is defined by various environmental issues and other issues. Right. Thank you, Doctor. We have a question from Yasmin Todiwala, who asks, uh, Doctor, what, uh, what about frozen shoulder? Uh, how can one cure it? It's a very good question. Frozen shoulder is basically a complication occurring in the shoulder joint. You have to understand shoulder is a very, very hypermobile joint. And to and in, in, in human biology or anatomy, mobility comes in lieu of stability. If you get a stable joint, its mobility will be less. And if, if you want a mobile joint, the stability will be less. What happens in frozen shoulder, particularly it occurs in patients who are suffering from diabetes, is that the joint fluid in the shoulder joint, they become a little bit thick. They become a little bit sticky. So this causes extreme painful shoulder movement. You will be surprised to know that adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder, what we are talking at the medical term is adhesive capsulitis. This, if you don't treat this disease, and most of the patients, it goes off automatically uh, within next uh, six months. So this is called frozen shoulder. But what we treat with is that you cannot do an exercise or physiotherapy when the pain is acute. So we, what we do is we treat with some painkillers. But if in case of elderly, we have to be very cautious. The best treatment is ultrasound guided injection of a depot steroid, a steroid that is placed and inside the joint and it doesn't move anywhere. It is not causing any systemic or entire body problem or something like that. So that is the best therapy. It gives one time solution. That's why one of my specialties is interventional musculoskeletal ultrasound where I can put an ultrasound machine. I can see the joint, the fluid and the person who is there, they also see that what I'm doing and I can see the needle where it's going. So it's a very precise way of treating frozen shoulder and it's an excellent way of treating. Doctor, we have a patient of yours uh, who 
who has uh, a query. I know there's not the right forum for it, but since he has said it, he says, uh, this is Shamal Kumar Sahtinha. He says, doctor, I'm a regular patient of yours visiting you at Arlen Tagore Highland Park. Now it is reported you're not sitting there. May I have a new location? I am staying at Santosh for India. So doctor's new location uh -huh. is Medica. He can come to Medica. He can come to Medica. You can go to and uh, that, that institution has been taken off by Arlen Tagore. The building is has been taken by somebody else. That 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 is not there anymore. Yeah. All right. So doctor, people are reaching you in various ways and coming here to uh, to reach out to you. Okay, we have a question from uh, Mr. Suresh Adhiari. He asks, in terms of tests, is CRP the only parameter to be tracked for rheumatoid arthritis or is ESR also relevant? Very good question. Very, very good question. I will give the difference between ESR and CRP. CRP is a very, very uh, precise uh, test that decides what is the state of inflammation in the body at one particular time. And CRP can change within 24 to 36 hours. Suppose there is an inflammation of the body and I give you a steroid and I want to see whether the steroid is working or not. I can check it after 36 to 48 hours and see the CRP is going down or not. So CRP is that fast. Regarding ESR, it is very, very, it is, uh, it is dependent on many things. If you have a low hemoglobin, your ESR will be high, even if you don't have any arthritis or anything else. So there are many reasons of high ESR apart from this. So it is less specific than CRP. So that's why, although we address both of them, ESR and CRP, and we correlate these two results with that of a patient's symptoms or any form of disease activity we get in the patient, suppose swollen joint or inflamed joint, or patient is complaining of pain or stiffness or something like that. So that CRP is very, very specific and sensitive. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Narendra Shah, who's 70. He says, I have headache and uneasiness. When upper headache, what type of rheumatoid pain and what is the cause and what are the what is the solution? He asks. A rheumatoid pain for a headache? That is what you want to know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upper headache. Upper headache, maybe in the upper part of the head, he is having a pain. Uh, right. Is he a rheumatoid patient or something like that? I didn't get the question properly, but I will try no. to answer his question. Uh, normally, rheumatoid arthritis affects the back of the neck. In the entire spine, it affects the back of the neck. That is called cervical spine. It doesn't affect the back or lower back or uh, the buttocks. So naturally, a rheumatoid patient with active disease might have a neck pain. If there is an upper head pain, it is not due to rheumatoid. It is due to something else. And if he is 70 years old and he has a headache, that needs to be seen by a rheumatologist or an internal medicine specialist to evaluate initially that why is he having a headache. Remember, a headache caused due to rheumatological problem in elderly, although it is a reason, you have to find look for common causes. We always look for common causes and not always skewed toward that you have got a rare rheumatological disease called giant cell arthritis or temporal arthritis or something else. So common causes may be a migraine or it may be a tension headache or it may be a headache referred from any other place of the body any, and some happening. It may be an eye problem which is causing a headache. So there are many reasons. So you have to evaluate the history properly, examine the patient and then evaluate. But rheumatoid arthritis per se doesn't cause a headache. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Mr. Uh, from Colonel Dugal. And he has two questions. Uh, one is he is he says he is seventy nine male. He has been suffering from low low back ache and pain in both the shoulders for the last ten years. And he says he has been on exercise and yoga. The pain has decreased, but it is always there. He says he is not taking any medicine. He has been using heat and oils to reduce the pain. Pain reduce, reduces after rest at night. Uh, he has spine problems in L4 and L5. Well, uh, Dugul Saab, uh, this is a very pertinent question. Uh, I will tell you a few nuances of diagnosis. You are suffering from last 10 years. 
that's a very important point. So it is a chronic disease. And uh, just asking, in case this has been a rheumatological problem, uh, it wouldn't have kept you in peace for the last 10 years. It would have worsened, worsened to a, such an extent that your shoulders would have been frozen or something like that. But even you have a low back pain and you had a spine problem in L4 and L5, I think it is a mechanical back pain. You're already 79. You have got shoulder pains. I presume that you have problem in lifting your hands over your head. If there are few symptoms like this, such as the pain is predominantly more after a period of rest, waking up in morning, you find it very difficult to move your shoulders. If you find it difficult to get up from seat without holding anything, if you ever had a headache, particularly on one side of the head, and if you ever had a problem with your vision, transient loss of vision, then I presume that a rheumatological diagnosis might fit in your case. And in that case, if you check uh, ESR and CRP in absence of any medicines and if they are high, then you should immediately consult a rheumatologist because if both of them are high, then definitely some kind of inflammation is taking place inside your body and these might be explained due to those inflammation. So a disease like giant cell arthritis or polymyalgia rheumatica is pretty common in any patient aged more than 60 years. If they complain of shoulder pain or the pelvic girdle or the buttock pain or thigh pain and have a headache at the same time or a jaw pain particularly, then we very strongly suspect that it is a case of polymyalgia rheumatica. It is a diagnosis which have to do a temporal artery ultrasound and there are many things we do it. So I think you should consult a rheumatologist as early as possible. Let him rule out that there is no rheumatological problem and then you can talk to an ortho or somebody else physical therapist. But that part is a very potentially treatable disease which needs to be diagnosed first, then you go ahead with the treatment. Right. Thank you, doctor. Uh, so Colonel Dukal has another question. He says his wife is 74. She has constant pain in the legs and cannot stand more than a few minutes. She has spine problem as at the tail. She does yoga and exercises, no medicines. What should she do to relieve pain? Well, uh, Dr. Saab, I, uh, the history, I'm sorry, but uh, we need more and more information regarding this type of pain. Whether uh, we need to know whether she is overweight or she is lean and thin, number one. If the pain is coming back from the low back and towards along the back side of your legs, which we call a radiating pain, then it may be a disc prolapse or disc called a nerve pinching at the back of your uh, uh, lumbar spine where the nerves come out to the legs due to a uh, slip of a disc, intervertebral disc. That's a very important thing. Uh, number two, uh, if there is a pain in the coccyx, I presume it's not for a long duration, maybe less than uh, one year or so. So for that, you need to uh, take a ring shaped pillow or coccyx pillow, which we call it, and use it for a stretch of two months, wherever she sits. The coccygeal pain settles automatically. You don't have to take any painkiller or something like that. But if you think that it is a muscle pain throughout the thighs and legs and the back pain is a separate thing. So that may be due to hypersensitivity of the muscle or age-related muscle degeneration, or it may be due to some kind of medicine. One of the common medicines is atorvastatin. Or if the patient is hypothyroid, this may happen. So there are many reasons. So it is very difficult to, uh, I can, can't give a diagnosis. I can give a set of diagnoses, which may match with one, two, three, uh, diseases, but uh, that needs to be evaluated properly by somebody. Right. So he's mentioned he's reverted saying that she's lean and thin, uh, but as you said, you know it needs to be clinically examined, and perhaps a good idea would be to uh, approach a, a doctor in his city, or of course they can yeah, go to of course, yeah. or a second opinion uh, at uh, care of Medica Hospital in Calcutta. Uh, we have a question from an anonymous attendee who's 70 years old. Uh, the question by him or her is, can inflammation associated with rheumatoid arthritis, high CRP levels uh, cause problems in, problems in the eyes? Yeah, what is the first part of the question? Can you repeat this? Can inflammation associated with rheumatoid arthritis 
and high CRP levels cause problem in the eyes? Yes, that's a very, very good question. Uh, uh, there are many rheumatological diseases that can affect the eyes and rheumatoid arthritis is one of them. Uh, the eye disease that uh, occurs with rheumatoid arthritis, we call it scleritis or iridocyclitis. So whatever be the term, it causes a painful eye with redness. And for that, the diagnosis, the term needs to be written by an ophthalmologist who examines the eye through a, a magnified slit lamp. They have a slit lamp by which they examine it and they write it. And they, we get lots and lots of referral from the eye doctors. So definitely rheumatoid arthritis can cause eye disease. And if the uh, eye doctor writes that this is a case of scleritis or it's a case of iridocyclitis, then it is our responsibility to control the inflammation, to bring the CRP down, to bring the ESR down with adding more and more drugs, immunomodulating drugs, the drugs that modify the immunity of our body so that the eyes are not attacked by our own immune system. In rheumatoid arthritis, the joints are also attacked by our own immune system. The treatment is more or less similar. There are certain injections we call biologics. Uh, they are taken in the skin or sometimes you need a hospitalization because it is given into the veins. Uh, they work wonders in rheumatoid arthritis. So those are secondary line of treatment, primarily are by tablets. So this is a very pertinent question. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis with high inflammation or even in controlled inflammation might cause eye diseases and these are the two common eye diseases. Also at the same time, there is secondary called dry eyes where patients with rheumatoid arthritis might suffer from dry eyes or dry mouth or dry nose. We call it Jogren syndrome or Sikka syndrome. I don't go by the terms. It's very difficult to memorize. But these are common complications of rheumatoid arthritis. So a very, very good question asked. Thank you, doctor. For, for all of you over here, as always, the video that, that you're watching right now is going to be, is, is being recorded and the edited video will be put up on seniorstudy.in on Monday. And you can have a look at it again, just in case you miss some points that Dr. Bose has made, you can always look at it. We'll also publish the takeaways on that day. So you can uh, look at both. Uh, doctor, we have a question from Praveena Tiwari uh, who asks, what causes trigger finger? Very good question. Trigger finger is basically a string that controls our finger movements. I will let you know. There are three joints, one between these two bones, another between these two bones, and third between these two bones. For movement of each bone, we have a rope. Consider it the muscle tendon. So remember, there are three ropes coming in through a small sheath. It is going under a sheet like this and hitting, reaching the joints, three of them together. Now, what happens is that there is a always movement, frictional movement under the sheet of this uh, row, uh, when, the, when the muscles are moving. And somehow, due to any disease or any overactivity or anything, if these finger uh, uh, tendons get swollen a little bit, the space is so low that they will just get stuck and they won't move. They will move if you put up strong pressure and it will look like as if you're shooting up the skull like this. And they won't come back again. So you need to push extra pressure and then it will slide under the particular sheath. So this is called a trigger finger. It can be caused due to any reason. It may be due to overactivity, it may be due to rheumatoid arthritis, it may be due to hypothyroidism. Sometimes we get in pregnancy. So there are many reasons. So this trigger finger sometimes settles automatically and sometimes we can see the thickening, the particular pea size thickening on the tender under ultrasound. We, if you put a linear probe ultrasound over here, we can see the beautiful tendon with thickening and it is sliding under that particular uh, I, I'm sorry, I think we've lost uh, Dr. Bose, but he'll, he's back. He's back again, so. Sorry, sorry, there was a disconnection. I'm sorry for the disconnection. I'm sorry. So there was a phone coming in. 
So as I was continuing, uh, that particular thing can be seen under ultrasound and we sometimes put a very short injection over there and that releases that particular movement. But most of the cases, we don't need to do anything. It removes, uh, comes back automatically by doing some hot and cold compress or maybe some painkiller medicines. Right. Doctor, we have a question from, uh, two questions from Marjorie Fernandez. Uh, the first one is, although my blood test doesn't show I, that she has, that I have RA, some of my toes seem to be bent. Why is this happening? Could it be due to my osteoarthritis, which is not causing pain, but the knees are generally stolen and have reduced flexibility? That's the first question. So he has got RA in blood? Doesn't have RA, doesn't have RA in the blood. Oh, Okay. Uh, I uh, I just can't comment on why your knees are swollen and why fingers are uh, getting uh, distorted. RA may be negative in the blood, but still you may be having rheumatoid factor that occurs in 30% of it. That is one in three patients will have a case of frank rheumatoid arthritis with all the symptoms and swollen joints, but still the rheumatoid factor and anti cct may be negative in their blood. So presence or absence of rheumatoid and anti CCP doesn't make a diagnosis. However, in any patient who has very high levels of rheumatoid arthritis or very high levels of anti CCP antibody, then these patients tend to have a very aggressive disease. They, risk, they need to take more medicines to control the disease. But if your uh, joints are getting um, basically distorted or there are deformity, we need to see it first, why there is a deformity. Because in rheumatoid arthritis, without causing pain or anything, it will cause a deformity. It will let you know that I am there and I'm damaging your joints for over years. If you don't take care of me, then I will deform them. So rheumatoid arthritis doesn't do that silently. So you need to see somebody nearby your place who can evaluate you properly. Right. Thank you, doctor. We have two more questions. One from the second from Margie Fernandez. Uh, second question from her. Can looking at the mobile phone, holding it in the left hand and while lying in bed lead to pain in the right shoulder? We all do this, doctor. Ah, that we do, even I do that. But uh, it depends on which shoulder you are pressing on. It, it is uh, holding it in left hand, lying on the bed, you are holding the phone in front of your head, I suppose. If you are lying uh, supine, your face is up towards the ceiling. Why will it cause a pain in the right shoulder? In fact, it can cause a elbow pain because it is holding your hand over there and that too on the left side, very unlikely on the right side. And if it does so, then it's likely to be a mechanical one, response to some local spray and anything else or not doing the same activity like that. Right, thank you, doctor. We have a question from Sudhir Shivastha uh, asking, uh, is there any cutoff age after which you may not develop arthritis? He is 63 and I guess he doesn't have arthritis, but he's he's obviously worried. No, I'm sorry to say there is no cutoff age. Uh, what I said in the beginning of uh, the introduction that rheumatoid arthritis occurs from 30s, 40s, something like that. I won't be surprised to say I have diagnosed rheumatoid arthritis for a first time in a 72-year-old female, first time. So we call it elderly onset rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, scientists are saying that it may be a different entity than a normal rheumatoid arthritis. However, treatment is same, but there is no cutoff age. That doesn't mean that you have to be terrified, stay fit and healthy, that's it. Right, thank you, doctor. Thank you very much uh, for your questions. We will, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we have received a couple of questions, but I'll stop at this because, uh, uh, you know, I know you are uh, best for time. So we will, uh, 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 we will stop, stop at this. Doctor, thank you very much for your time today and for answering all the questions uh, so very well and so patiently. Uh, Clearly, you know, it is, uh, it is evident that there are quite a few questions about rheumatoid arthritis and perhaps we should uh, consider this once again and um, look at uh, various other issues that people might have and address them. Thank you very much once again. And we will be back next Saturday at 5 p.m. with our next round of uh, a health live session. Those of you who are, who are interested in, in joining us, uh, next week, as well as the weeks thereafter, please uh, fill up the form for pre-registration and we will 
auto register you every week and then you can join uh, as you please. You don't have to really uh, uh, be worried about missing out on something. Okay? There, there's, there should be no, as, as the youth says these days, there should be no FOMO, no fear of missing out. Thank you Wendy, very, once again, doc, doctor, for, uh, uh, for coming in today uh, uh, on and speaking about rheumatoid arthritis. And thank you to the team at Medica Hospital for facilitating this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Subscribe now and press the bell icon. Never miss an update.